Hey everybody. Well, today I thought we could take a look at something kind of unusual and unique and um, kind of rare actually, but it's a really obscure prop replica. Now, <laughs> fans of I Dream of Genie, like myself, the old classic I Dream of Genie show, will know what this is immediately. But um, in later episodes of the show, Genie would carry her bottle around in this really cool custom-made suitcase. It, it was a, kind of a neat little prop that they came up with. And it was this kind of case that uh, her bottle would fit inside, which always made me laugh because, you know, in reality, Jeannie could just blink her bottle to wherever she was and just sleep in it there. But I think it's really cool that the prop guys actually went through the extra effort to make her a specialized little suitcase to carry her bottle in. And it looked just like this. Now, this one's slightly different. There's some things that I'll discuss that are uh, not the same as the original prop. In fact, I would love to know what happened to the original prop. I've never seen it turn up anywhere um, or what happened to it. But I think the first time that we get a look at this prop was from the Laugh-In episode. It was like a crossover episode between the TV show Laugh-In and I Dream of Jeannie. And I think that's the first time we get to see it. And that's where uh, Jeannie is worried about Major Nelson hanging out with all those beautiful starlets in Hollywood. <laughs> and so she goes out there and, of course, uh, she, she is masquerading as the Princess Armina. Uh, I'd have to go back and watch the episode about how that whole thing came about. And then Roger Healy, of course, being as greedy as he always is, is, is her agent. And the, the episode is full of chaotic comedy, and I absolutely love it, especially the scene where Dr. Bellows, who was my favorite character, he's so funny, um, Major Nelson tells him, because he sees Jeannie's bottle in their hotel room, and uh, he says, what's this? And, and Major Nelson tells him it was some aftershave. So after Dr. Bellows' shower, he opens the bottle thinking there's aftershave in there, and Jeannie's actually inside there. So Jeannie blinks a skunk that she's holding in her hands, and it's actually a real skunk, too. It's pretty cool that Barbara Eden, you know, was holding this cute little skunk, and um, she's waving it around in the air, and the smell <laughs> is coming out of the bottle, and of course, Dr. Bellows, you know, he's like, what is the meaning of this? Because he's got these this skunk smell coming out of there. Oh, the episode is so funny. But I think that's the first time we see this. Um... There's another episode, it's another one of my favorites, it's the Haunted House episode. Major Nelson inherits this castle from one of his rich relatives in England, and he goes out there to check it out, and there's a shady lawyer that's trying to uh, uh, kind of like double sell the castle, and he wants to scare Major Nelson, Jeannie, and Major Healy out of there so that he can sell it to somebody else. But Jeannie uses her case again in that episode, and you kind of get a good close-up because it's sitting on the table, and I think it's actually open. Uh, we'll, we'll check out some clips from those episodes so we can kind of look at the actual prop. But I think that's the other time you see it. I don't, I don't know if it was used in any other episodes. I'm trying to think what other episodes it showed up in. That might have been the only two. If you guys can figure out what other episodes it was, uh, comment down below because I, I can't remember at this point. All right, well, anyway, let's check out some clips. Oh, okay, so my mistake in looking at these episodes now, I'm pretty sure the first time we see this case is in this episode. So this is actually the Ghost Breaker episode. It's episode 21 from season 3. It's called My Master the Ghost Breaker. That's the one where Major Nelson uh, finds out that he inherited this castle in England. So here you can see right at the very beginning of the episode, Jeannie is holding onto the case. And you can see it's got the same similar shape to it. I think the handles on hers were made of plastic instead of the uh, kind of leatherette material that I think mine has. You can see the distinctive shape on it. Um, there's an, a scene where you can see the bottom of it a little better, too. Now, here you can see the bottom of it. And you can see it's made of some kind of material. You can see the wrinkling going on from the center part of it. So I think the whole thing was covered in probably that pleather or maybe vinyl. I'm not really sure, but you can see how it's kind of stitched together. It's, a, it's actually a pretty um, custom-made piece. I'm really kind of surprised that they made such a neat little case for her. Now, here's a really good close-up that shows up a little bit later in the episode. And you can see how the shape of the inside of it is shaped to form around the bottle like that. It's got kind of a, looks like a soft red velvety material on the inside. But it's really cool how they made this piece. And um, it's a great close-up of it right there. Okay, so I know that this is off topic, but I just happened to find this. Um, this is from episode 23 from season 3. It's called My Double Crossing Master. There is a lot of bloopers in Genie, and maybe I'll do a video about that, showing some of the bloopers in the show. But this was my all-time favorite blooper from the entire series. Now, whenever Genie blinks and something appears or disappears, um, Larry Hagman and Barbara Eden have to do this thing called the freeze, where... 
Uh, Jeannie blinks, and then the director says, freeze, and they cannot move. They have to stay perfectly still, and then say she blinks something into the picture. In this case, it's going to be a newspaper. And then um, after the newspaper is is in position, the director will say, action, and then they uh, go on with the action, and then Major Nelson's supposed to react to the paper appearing in midair in front of his face. Well, that was how it was supposed to go down with this particular um, scene, but they screwed up. The editor screwed up. He actually caught the freeze on film. So you'll see right here, Barbara Eden says, read your paper, Master. And um, Major Nelson goes, what? And you'll see them both just kind of freeze in place. It's kind of a really odd thing. And then a newspaper comes floating down on some invisible wires. Now, what was supposed to happen is they, they were supposed to edit the film so that um, as soon as Major Nelson says, what? They were going to cut it. And then uh, whoever the stagehand is brings the newspaper down. It'll be right in front of Major Nelson's face over here. And then when they say action, he was supposed to react to the newspaper appearing right in front of his face. But instead, the editor screwed up, and he uh, got the freeze in there. And you'll see it just kind of has an unusual jump cut where now Major Nelson's suddenly sitting on the back of the couch. Okay, so actually here, let me turn this up so you can hear the whole thing. All right. Okay, so here we go. Let me turn this on. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> now see, he's sitting on the back. You can tell that Major Nelson's sitting on the back of the couch right there. So that's the that's the screw up. You can see where they're kind of just frozen right there. I remember when I first saw this scene, I, it, I knew something was wrong or something wasn't right about it, just because of the way they're both sitting there. Especially Barbara Eden. You can see that she's sitting there really still, right like that. And then it just immediately cuts right there. So you knew that something was screwy. It is a, such a cool blooper. It's one of my favorites. Um, it was just an editing mistake that somebody made. But uh, they, Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman, Hagman always talked about how they had to do the freeze. And they would have to do it a ton of times. You know, Back in the day, they, this is before CGI and stuff, they had to do everything on stage. And so uh, it was really cool. They had to do everything with practical effects. And I think that's awesome that they actually caught them doing the freeze on camera. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure this is the second appearance of The Case. And this is from Season 4, Episode 19, and it's called Biggest Star in Hollywood. And this is the next time that you see this case. You can see the bottle is resting in the case right there. And Jeannie is packing up to go to Hollywood. As you can see, she's she doesn't want Major Nelson to be around all those beautiful starlets. And so uh, she's getting ready to pack up right there. But it's a really good view of the bottle case right there. And this is when they arrive in Hollywood now, and you can see that she's carrying the bottle. You can kind of see the bottom of it a little bit better right there, and the latch that's on there. Now, here's another good view of it. You can really see the bottom right here. If I zoom in, you can really tell that it's got some kind of material around it, where they you know, had to crush it together in order to stitch it right there. So, uh, yeah, I wonder what that's made of. I would love to know what they, what they made that out of. So yes, it was used in two episodes of the show. I don't know if it was used in any more. It's kind of a waste of a good prop to only use it in two episodes, but I don't remember it showing up in any episodes after this. And this one was from the fourth season, so there was only one more season after this. So maybe you guys can chime in in the comments if you remember seeing the genie bottle case in any other um, episodes, but these are the only two that I can remember. All right, so looking back at this one now, so we can see that it's got the hard shell on the outside. It's some kind of vacuum-formed plastic or something. I'm not sure how it was made. I'll go into the history about that in a minute. Um, now, on the original prop, as we saw, it was covered in some kind of a vinyl material. So it's almost like this is what it would look like before the vinyl was put on. I'm not really sure, but it does have the latch right here. We can open this up, and now we can see the inside of it. So we have the really nice red velvet, just like uh, Barbara Eden's real case. So you can see how the hinges are placed on each end there, on each end of that, you know, end of the uh, sides there. Now this has got the red velvet. There's no cushioning in here. It's still the hard um, case on the inside. But it didn't look like uh, Barbara Eden's case was, you know, soft on the inside either, except for the velvet. So this one seems to be pretty accurate kind of in the way it looked on the inside. Um, whoever made this actually did the stitching on it really nicely. These are actually machine sewn, it looks like, and it looks like they did a really good job on here. Let me get a closer look at the inside.
So it looks like there was about three layers of material to make this thing. You got some there, right here in the middle, and then right on the very end. You can see the stitch work that was done right here. And then there's some more over here. A lot of care was taken into making this piece, and uh, you can tell a lot of work was put into it. All right, so let me put a genie bottle in there and see what it looks like. Okay, so this bottle here was painted by Brian Fetzer. Um, I talk about him in a separate video. I'll put a link down in the description where I talk about the genie bottle, the prop, the um, how it became the genie bottle, and comparisons of the other ones, and uh, some interesting behind the scenes drama that went on during the filming of the show. Uh, so I did a whole video about that. Now, I didn't mention Brian Fetzer's name before because I didn't know if he wanted me to, but um, since then I have discovered that he's okay with it. And also, um, he's back to painting bottles. In that video I mentioned he wasn't painting bottles anymore, but he is in fact painting these bottles again. And so um, check him out on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, but I think that's where you can get in contact with him. So it's Brian Fetzer, F-E-T-Z-E-R. And um, there's about three really good genie bottle artists out there, but I can only speak for Brian's bottles. In fact, he did such a wonderful job on this. I bought two uh, because it was so beautiful. And these are made from real Jim Beam bottles, just like the original prop. So anyway, we can see that we can actually fit this in here now. It fits perfect. I mean, it fits absolutely perfect in there. Look at that. This thing was form fitted. So then we can actually close it, put the latch on like that and then you can actually just carry it along now it's got some weight to it now with that bottle because the bottle's got some decent weight to it but yeah it'll actually fit in there so <laughs> yeah this is really cool so you know i actually have used this uh it's kind of funny some people at work i was telling them i have the one of the genie bottles and there was some genie bottle fans at work as well and i and they said oh you got to bring the bottles to show us and I said, okay, so I brought the bottle to work and I brought it in this case. You know, what better way to, uh, you know, make sure that it's safe. And <laughs> their reaction was so funny. They're like, oh my gosh, you actually even have the case too? And so it was hilarious. It was just a hilarious day. But there were so many people that saw it. Some customers where I worked, some customers saw it too. And they're like, oh my gosh, they couldn't believe that they were holding a genie bottle. It was really, really cool. All right, so let me talk about the history of where I got this piece. So this was actually an eBay find. I found this on eBay and it was probably about 10 years ago, uh, maybe more, maybe more. And I was lucky to find it. It just showed up out of the blue. Um, I knew what it was the very second I saw it. And it was a really nice lady who was the seller for this. Now, uh, she, the, she sold, I think, three or four of them. The first one came and went. It sold for, an, it was crazy. It was like $650 or some crazy amount like that. And I was bidding on it, but it just got too high for, you know, it was just too rich for my blood. And then the second one came along uh, about a month later, because I, I, I thought the first one, after the first one, that was it. I wasn't going to see it again because I, I knew it was a handmade piece. And then lo and behold, a second one shows up, and I was not going to let that one slip out of my hands. I don't remember how much I paid for this. It was probably about $350 is what I'm guessing um, is what I probably paid for it. And then uh, she made about, I think she made one or two more. I don't remember. There was three or four of these. I, I got to talk to her. She was a really nice lady. Turns out her brother made these. Um, I, I think he just made one on a whim to see if he could do it. And uh, she thought, well, let's see if we can sell it on eBay. Once they found out what kind of a price they could get for it, she said, hey, uh, can, you, <laughs> can you make some more of these? And so he made another one. And then uh, she told me that she's not sure he's going to make any more. She's not sure, sure he, she can convince him to make any more because they're very labor intensive to make. Because they are. I mean, you can see just by looking at it that it probably took a lot of time and effort to make it. I don't know if he has a mold to make the shell of it, but, you know, he, he made the mold of it. It's probably all solid in here. Maybe it's, it feels solid in here. It doesn't, well, maybe it's hollow. I don't know. And then I think she made the interior. I think she told me she sewed the interior. And then they just kind of glue it in there. But, you know, he's got to do all the hardware on here and everything else. So it was a very labor-intensive project. So he only made, uh, I think, one or two more after that. So three or four total. And then I never saw him again. That was it. After that, they were all done. And, and that was kind of like, a, you know, three or four and done. That was no, there was no more after that. So, um, and then I never saw him again. This is one of these things that are so obscure and rare and probably just because they're so hard to make that you don't see them very often. But about a month ago... Uh, which would have been in uh, August. Uh, Brian Fetzer, the, the gentleman I mentioned who painted my genie bottles, 
he actually had one up for sale on eBay. I couldn't believe it. And his actually looked more more authentic than this one. It's it had a um, the shape was more realistic. You know, like mine here, it has a little bit of a point to it. On Barbara Eden's uh, case, it's more rounded and it's more narrow near the front. It's more shaped like the bottle. This one looks more thicker in uh, just the general shape of it. But Brian's looked more authentic, and his actually had the covering on it that had that kind of leather pleather material or vinyl whatever it was and he even had the bottom where you know it had that kind of disc of material there he had that too his looked really really good had the nice red velvet on the inside and um i can't remember how much it sold for it was like 350 400 maybe and so um i think he was in a partnership with somebody else to make make these and i don't know if he's going to make any more he said that they they do take a lot of work to make so um, I'm not sure if he's going to make any more, but like I said, you can contact him on uh, Facebook and see if he is making these. Uh, he makes all kinds of cool stuff. I've bought two bottles from him, a uh, replica first season bottle stopper, a display case, and I show all of that in my other I Dream a Genie bottle video, so you can check all that out. But anyway, just thought I would share this with you and let you see what this looks like because it is such a rare piece. and. I actually forgot I even had it. I was rummaging through the closet and found it in there. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, I thought you'd be getting a kick out of seeing something like this. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate your viewership. I'll see you on the next video, and have a good one.